Hi guys, this is Nas of Locomobiles.com and welcome back to my channel. And in this uh, video, I'm going to talk about XE Framework. So we'll talk about some introduction about XE Framework and then I'm going, I'm going to show you how you can create an XE Framework. And uh, if you haven't subscribed yet to this channel, please uh, click the subscribe button and also enable the uh, notification bell icon so that you'll get notifications for new videos. Uh, on this channel so why bother creating a framework um, if you have a source code um, wherein you would want to reuse then you can bundle it as a framework and you can use it for different projects and if for example if you're like Google who have different uh, API's and also SDK's then you would want to bundle it bundle your source code in a framework so what is XE framework um, this was introduced in the 2019 WWDC it's a new framework bundle format which allows distribution of binary framework or libraries for multiple platforms it also supports uh, distribution of Swift and C base uh, code you can include binaries for iOS devices simulators and Mac Catalyst in a single distribution bundle so these are the steps that you just need to remember when you are creating your own XE framework first is creating your framework or your static library and then you'll move on to the archiving and building step and create your XE framework and lastly of course you would be distributing your um, XE framework so the first step you would uh, put or you're going to create a framework or a static library either in Swift or Objective-C and for frameworks um, for instance uh, you created a Swift framework you would want to archive it before you would be able to create an XE framework so there are two things that you need to remember make sure that skip install is set to no and build libraries for distribution is set to yes skip install uh, will I mean set setting skip install to no will enable a copy of your framework to be copied in the products folder of your archive and then enabling build libraries for distribution to yes um, will generate the binary interface for you when you're archiving the uh, framework it is a required step uh, to make sure that it is going to be compatible with different compiler versions or xcode uh, versions so when you're archiving your framework you just need to type xcode build and then archive and then pass in uh, different parameters such as the scheme uh, in this case it's blog kit the archive path or the file name of your XE archi archive which is going where you would want to save your archive and what's the file name the SDK in this case it's iPhone OS or iPhone simulator and optionally skip install set to know here if you haven't done that in your project and then if you're uh, creating an XE framework for a library then you would just build your library if you're building a library for the simulator a library for the device a library for Mac then Xcode build build in uh, in the terminal and then pass in the scheme the derived path and the architecture and the SDK so if we have the architecture for the simulator which is uh, x86-64 in the SDK iPhone simulator and if you are going to uh, create the XE framework this is the step for the framework so in the terminal you would just uh, type in Xcode build and then um, pass in the create XE framework command this is uh, specific for frameworks for static libraries it would be different so you just pass in the framework parameter for uh, the path of your framework so it depends how many frameworks you'll have in this example we have a couple one for your iOS and one for the simulator and then finally 
where you would want to save your XC framework and what's the file name of your framework. So in the example, the output is bloodkit.xc framework. And then if you have a static library, for instance, a, an Objective-C static library, um, typically you would have the binary or the archive and then the header. So of course you would start with Xcode build, then create XC framework. Then you would pass in the library parameter for the location of your archive. And then your headers. In the headers uh, parameter, you would not be passing in the header file name, you know, the, the path to the uh, file, but instead the, the path to the directory where you can find the headers. So if you have a different variant, so you would add a pair of library and headers. And it's okay if you would be passing in the same header path. Um, anyway, the header would be just the same, right? And then uh, finally, you would be uh, providing the output, which is the destination of your XC framework and the file name. So the last step would be distribution. Uh, you can distribute your XC framework bundle on your website um, so that it's downloadable or if you have a repository or a Git repo, then you can make it available there. And if you have CocoaPods 1.90 or higher, then you, you can distribute it using CocoaPods with uh, with your XC framework so on the next part I'll be showing you showing you how you can create the XC framework and some other tips that I would uh, be providing when uh, preparing your XC framework to show you the finished product um, I have a couple of uh, projects here one is the using blog kit XC framework and the other one is uh, using static XC framework I'm going to start with the using blog kit framework so um, the using blog kit XC framework is an iOS application and this is just a demonstration of uh, when using the uh, XC framework as you can see here we have an uh, a blog kit XC framework which is um, part of the project and then if I'm going to run this um, application it should print uh, the number of posts from a remote server a blog post so in the debugger um, you can see that it printed a post uh, count 100 it means that uh, the number of posts available on that server is 100 and if we are going to explore the XE framework you will notice that the XE framework has a few uh, a couple of folders uh, in this example and then an info plist so this is the typical structure that you would find in an XE framework since I only have uh, frameworks or bundled frameworks for the iOS device and and the uh, iOS simulator so right now you're only s seeing a couple of them if I added Mac OS then I would see another uh, another folder for Mac OS and for uh, other platforms in case so I'll have uh, one or more in this uh, XE framework bundle so in the bundle since this is uh, a bundle for or an XE framework for frameworks then I would see the framework for that specific uh, variant and if I explore explore further in the framework, um, this is the same framework you would find when you're building your uh, framework. And then if you explore the products folder, you would find the same framework. So basically, uh, XE framework or when you're creating your XE framework, it's just uh, steps in bundling different uh, frameworks or variants of your framework or your static library into one big bundle which the newer Xcode versions recognize in how to 
integrate all right so this is for the uh, blog kit the other one is the person kit person kit is a very simple same as the blog kit is a very simple static library it's just it has a person class that would just print out a hard-coded person name so if I'm going to run this again it should print the name in the debugger which is John so this is a hard-coded um, string if uh, I'm going to explore this I show this in the finder and then I'm going to explore the uh, libraries I would find the header this header directory was generated by X uh, by Xcode build when you are creating the XE framework and this is the uh, binary that was built all right and the uh, the variant for the simulator you would also find there okay so uh, the next step I'll be showing you how you can create the XE framework for blog kit um, and then the next one is the XE framework for person kit okay in this section I'm going to show you how you can create a uh, an XE framework um, by you know bundling other frameworks so in front of me we have a blog kit so this is a project a framework project and we have a couple of uh, classes which is uh, a struct I mean uh, we have a struct post and then also a uh, blog class so if we are gonna look at the uh, post truck it uh, there would be several properties the user ID ID title body and it's a very simple uh, data model and it's codable because um, I'm using this when fetching data or JSON data from a remote server it will be converted or encoded into this uh, object and then we have the blog class the blog class is uh, going to have an initializer and get post so it will retrieve the uh, posts from a URL and then it will read the return data and then encode it into an array of posts and eventually the client will consume the return uh, post objects so before you are going to archive this framework uh, so that you could use it to create an XE framework you have to make sure of a couple of things one is to enable for distribution so I'm gonna go ahead to the build settings and then locate distribution so you need to locate build libraries for distribution and make sure it is checked to yes all right so um, the other thing that you need to do is locate skip install and make sure it is set to no so you change this whenever you would want to archive this and use it for uh, or when creating an XE framework and I'm gonna I'm going to show you the reason why you need to enable the library for distribution because this file the Swift interface is generated whenever you set it to yes so here you will find information about uh, how the uh, this framework was compiled the version the Swift version and also the interface um, that is available or provided by this framework so this ensure compat ensures compatibility between uh, versions of, of compilers if you're going to use it with a newer version of a compiler then that compiler will be able to still read this binary uh, because of this interface so uh, skip install is important because when you are archiving the the, the framework let me just show you um, again so let's say we have this products directory typically the products directory when you're archiving it has its own products directory and then if 
skip install is set to yes, then this framework will not be included. So of course you need the framework, so you have to include it. So it's, you, you need to set skip install to no. And I have one tip when it comes to naming your classes or structs, um, you need to avoid naming it the same name as your uh, framework. In this case, I have my framework named uh, blog kit. And here I have a blog class. I wouldn't want to name it blog kit class because when I'm using it in an XE framework, it will return an error. Um, at this stage, um, it's a known issue, so you might want to avoid naming your classes or structs the same name as your module name. All right. All right. So I think we're good to go, and then we're going to create our archive. So I already set the binary to this uh, by binary or enable library distribution to yes and then skip install to no so we're gonna go ahead and archive this so i am going to uh, go to the blog kit project directory and i'm going to open a terminal from there and i have i'm just going to copy my terminal code and then in the terminal the uh, I'm, I'm going to paste my code in in a new line so that it's readable so um, there are three sets of terminal or Xcode build code here so we have the archiving stage for the iOS or for the device and then another one for the simulator and then finally once these two are done then the Xcode build X uh, create XE framework will be executed and final will have the XE framework so I'm just going to hit enter and then wait it uh, wait for it to finish So I set the archive uh, to be saved in a specific folder, which is, uh, you know, I prefer to save it in the builds folder. So it will, so those two archives will be saved there. And then the XE framework will be saved in the archives uh, directory. All right. So it's done. If it's successful, your XE framework, um, Creation will return a message that's successfully written out to this path. All right, if we're gonna go back to the blog kit directory, we have the builds. Okay, we have the build for um, the XE framework and then the archive, these are the archives. Let me just go back and talk about the why it's very important for skip install to be to set to be set to no because if it's yes skip install is set to yes the products directory will be empty all right don't forget that going back to the builds directory so here we can find our blog kit at xc framework and within the uh, bundle you'll find the the two variants for the iOS device and the iOS simulator and let's uh, go ahead and uh, use our XE framework in an iOS project so I'm going to create a single view iOS project and blog kit demo I'm gonna call it blog kit demo and make sure Swift since it's uh, well I just prefer to use Swift uh, and then I'm going to save it here. No, probably XE framework there, and then click create. And I'm going to drag the XE framework 
in my project and we should be okay so if I'm going to use it I'm just going to import import blog kit and then my code here so let me just copy my code using blog kit and well, I'm just going to copy everything and then overwrite this all right so it will just uh, get the posts and then it returns an array of posts and then I'm just going to get the number of posts and print it in the debugger okay so let me just run this in the simulator and see what will happen just like uh, I've shown you earlier it should print the number of posts and right now we can see the number of posts it says post count 100 so there you go it's very easy to create an XC framework when you're bundling your uh, frameworks in this case Swift frameworks if you haven't subscribed to this channel um, just click the subscribe button and enable the uh, bell icon so that you'll receive notifications for new videos and stay with me I'm going to show you how you can create an XE framework for your static library in this section I'm going to show you how you can prepare and build your static library so that you can create your XE framework so right now we're looking at a person kit static library with one uh, one class called person it has the name method that returns a hard-coded name so make sure your static library uh, the the header file and the public interfaces is added on your header file so that clients will be able to, able to use the properties or method you would want them to have access to and also make sure that the header file is added in the copy file space so that when this uh, when this static library will be built a copy will be uh, copied over to the products directory so let's go ahead and build and then create an XC framework so I'm going to go go and show this project in the finder I need to open the root folder and I'm going to open a terminal you can open a terminal anywhere uh, anywhere you want in this case I open it in the same directory as the project and I'm going to copy the archive and or the build and the uh, create framework script so that it's quicker and then I'm just going to add another line and then paste my script so here we have uh, three stages the same as I did previously on the framework I'm going to build uh, build the the version for the simulator and then the next step will be building for the device and then finally we'll be creating the XE framework alright so I'm going to hit enter this script uh, or similar script is very useful if you have a continuous integration setup so running it in the terminal is very convenient as opposed to you know doing everything manually all right so our build succeeded and our XE framework has been written out in our new directory so let me just go there and locate it it's in the builds directory so we have the iPhone build and the simulator build and let's make sure it, make sure that our header and our archive exist so in the 
iPhone directory which I uh, I provided and then in the build directory you will find the products directory in this one we have the include which should have the header and here we go and then our library or our archive and let me check for the other one so in the products and this is for the simulator so we have we should have our header and then the archive for this variant and I'm gonna open our XE framework so here we go this is our XE framework we have one for the device and then the other one for the simulator and if I have built one or added one for the Mac then I would also have another uh, folder for the Mac in this bundle so the next step we are going to try this XE framework in an iOS project so I'm going to create a new iOS project I'm going to call this person person kit demo and then I'm going to set it to use objective C you can I, I can use Swift but it's simpler if I'm going to use objective C for this demonstration so I have a view controller and then I am going to just drag the XE framework in the project and I just wanted to have a copy of this so I I make sure that copy items of need is it's is checked and then I have my XE framework there and since I'm going to use the person class I'm going to import it person dot h and of course I have my cheat sheet and using person kit so it will be faster all right okay so I just need to overwrite everything and then paste it there and then here we go we created an instance of person and then we uh, called the name method and it will be printed using ns log then we should see the name in the debugger and I'm going to build it now or run it in the simulator and our debugger should print or should show the name John so there you have it it's very easy to create an XE framework for your static libraries or for your uh, libraries written in objective C or any C based code so I have talked about some introduction about XE framework and I also shown you how you can create an XE framework for your frameworks and also for your static uh, libraries if you haven't subscribed to this channel please click the subscribe button and uh, if you like this video click the like button and then enable the notifications by clicking the bell icon so that you'll receive notifications of new videos like this on my channel and you if you like this video as well you can share it to your friends on Facebook or any social network so uh, that's it for XC framework I hope you enjoyed this video and you have learned something from uh, this tutorial and see you again on the next video